Okay, in this video we're talking about isotopes and valence electrons. So starting out with an isotope, you guys kind of got an idea of what an isotope is already. Um, it's an atom of an element with differing number of neutrons. So the only thing you're changing is the number of neutrons. So in short, uh, an isotope is just another version of the same element. The only difference is the number of neutrons. Um, they, ha they still have the same number of protons and electrons. That stays the same in each isotope. Um, they have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of protons and electrons. Um, they only differ in the mass of, of that uh, uh, isotope. Um, so looking at a couple examples here, if we had carbon-12 and carbon-14, the number of protons, again, um, so let's, uh, if you look at carbon on the periodic table, you look at that atomic number, the protons and electrons are still the same. It's six for carbon. And down here at carbon-14, um, you have six protons, six electrons. The only difference is carbon-12 only has six neutrons. Carbon-14 has eight neutrons. So you're just changing the number of neutrons. And if you change the number of neutrons, you're changing the mass, and that's what this number is, the mass number. So we got carbon-12, which weighs 12 AMUs, carbon-14, which weighs 14 AMUs. Now in the homework, you guys may see something like this, um, and it's just dealing with isotopes here. So if we look at the first one, um, how you're going to fill these things in, I'll do a couple examples here. So we have carbon-12 and carbon-13, so some of these numbers are going to be the same, some of them are going to be different. So if we know what an isotope is, we know neutrons are going to be different. Protons and electrons stay the same. So if we look at carbon, find that on your periodic table. The atomic number is six, so our number of protons is six. So we just fill it in like this. We have six protons, the number of electrons stays the same. So both of those, carbon-13 and carbon-12, are going to have six protons each, six electrons each. Uh, now for the number of neutrons. So this is the mass number that we're going to use, not the one on your periodic table um, because we're talking about these specific isotopes. So carbon-12, we'll do that one first. 12 minus the number of protons. Since this is our mass number, that is protons plus neutrons. Remember, those two things make up the mass of an atom. So if we already know protons, which is 6, we can subtract that from the total. 12 and we have six neutrons also so you're still kind of doing it the same way finding neutrons the same way only you're using these numbers so carbon 13 13 minus 6 gives us seven neutrons in that case so then you're done that's all you have to do on that one now this one may be a little bit harder um, and it may be a little confusing once you look at it but just take it one step at a time so we know our element it gives you copper right um, so we can look up on the periodic table, find copper, we find the atomic number, what's the number of protons would be 29, so we would write 29, and that's going to be the same for both of them. 29 and 29, number of electrons, 29, 29. Now, we still have to fill in our mass number up here for copper, so um, if we are finding this isotope, then we have to take number of neutrons plus protons because remember mass is protons plus neutrons and in this case if you're trying to find the mass you actually do uh, protons plus neutrons so 34 plus 29 here we got 59 63 here so that would be copper 63 uh, this one we have 36 plus 29 gives us 65. So these are our two isotopes, copper 63 and copper 65. <clears throat> okay, so you can kind of think about, I should have had you guys uh, actually pause the video and, and kind of work this one out in your head, see if you could do it, um, but if not, that's okay, but as long as you guys got the idea of how to do those. All right, valence electrons. So we know what an electron is, right? Those are the um, if we look at the location, they, sur they are surrounding the nucleus, right? Um, and they have different energy levels. So if we look at a Bohr model, we're looking at valence electrons. Basically, all a valence electron is, um, it's still an electron. It's just the electrons that are in the outermost shell, so in the highest energy level. So 
if we look at this one right here, this element right here, um, which would be aluminum in this case, we count how many are in the outermost shell, so um, which would be shell number three, or energy level three. So we have one, two, three valence electrons. So that's what we need to know if we're looking at valence electrons. So if I asked you how many valence electrons does aluminum have, you would tell me three valence electrons. Okay, so easier ways to know the uh, number of valence electrons. We're gonna look at the groups and the periods here. So the rows are called periods and we have seven in the periodic table. So these are the rows. We have row one, row two, row three, four, five, six, seven. And then the groups are, oops, sorry, let me go back. Groups are one, two, three, four, all the way through to 18. Now, the, there's only a specific uh, groups that we're gonna use and we're, we're calling these the main groups. Uh, the main groups include groups 1 and 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So these groups in here, these are our transition metals. And the reason why we're not going to include those today is because they have, um, these kind of have some funky arrangements here with their charges. Um, they have variable charges and variable amounts of valence electrons. Um, so we're not going to deal with these. You guys can, uh, when, once you make it to chemistry, um, you guys will deal more with these. But for now, we're just going to use the main groups. And there's kind of an easy way to know how many valence electrons we have. So if we're in group one, that tells you that each one of these has one valence electron. Um, and it just works out really nicely for you. So group two has two valence electrons. Now if we skip over to 13, 13 has three valence electrons. Group 14, you can guess, has four. 15 has five, six, seven, and then we have eight valence electrons here. So an easy way to kind of know how many, well, one and two are pretty easy. Once you get to 13, if you just cover up the one, it tells you how many valence electrons. Right here, cover up the one. For each one of these, you can cover up the one, and it tells you how many valence electrons. So that's just kind of a little cheat there so you know how many valence electrons each group has. So if it's in this group, this row, this uh, column going down, um, it has three valence electrons. If it's in this group, it has four. So when this whole group has five, six, seven, and eight. So that's kind of an easier way to remember that. Okay, so stable electron configuration. So all of these elements, the only thing they want to do is become stable. So that's what they're all trying, trying to um, become, basically. So when the highest occupied energy level of an atom is filled with electrons, the atom has, is stable and not likely to react. So if it's not stable, then it's probably going to react with another element to try to become stable. Um, noble gases, so which are group 18, so you need to know that. If I asked you which group are the noble gases, you tell me group 18. Um, they have a stable electron configuration with eight valence electrons. <clears throat> and unless it is helium, um, which has a stable outermost energy level because it's full with just two valence electrons. The rest of them have eight valence electrons and those are stable. So all the rest of these groups, if I go back here, um, all these groups are trying to become like the noble gases. So you can kind of think of these as the royalty here, no noble gases, everybody wants to be like them. So group 18, they all want to have the same electron configuration as group 18. Okay, so how do they do that? They do that by bonding with other elements. Um, chemical properties of an element depend on the number of valence electrons. Therefore, it is useful to have a model of an atom that focuses only on valence electrons. Now the model that we're going to use sometimes is called Lewis structure. Um, or the electron dot diagram. And so this was created by um, this guy right here, Gilbert Lewis. Um, and it's a model of a uh, covalent molecule that shows all of the valence electrons basically. Um, each dot in, so this is kind of a model of it, and each dot of, around this uh, symbol is one valence electron. So in this model, you're only looking at valence electrons, electrons in the outermost energy level. 
Um, in this case, we would have sulfur. And if we looked at sulfur, um, so if we went back, found sulfur, it's right here, it's in group 16. So we know that it has, we cover that one, it has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and so that's the number of valence electrons. A symbol in the center represents the nucleus and all the other electrons. So if it's sulfur or whatever you're doing, you just write the symbol in the middle, number of valence electrons around it. Okay, so this kind of just sums it up here, what they're gonna look like. So group one, all of them are just gonna have one dot around them because they have one valence electron. Group two, two dots. Group 13, three dots. Group 14, and you do it on all four sides. And once you do it on all four, four sides, then you start adding another one to one side, or two sides in the case of 16, or three sides in the case of 17, or all four sides have two dots in the case of 18, and that's a stable electron configuration. Okay, the electron dot diagram practice. So I'll do two here, and then I'll have you guys, um, you can pause the video or work some out on a piece of paper. Um, if we look at beryllium, so we're just looking at beryllium on our periodic table, we would write the symbol, BE, and if you guys notice, and if it has two letters, the first letter is capitalized, the smaller letter is always lowercase, uh, and we have Beryllium, it's in group two, so we know beryllium only has two valence electrons, so we draw it just like this. We looked at silicon. Silicon is SI for the symbol. So SI, and it's in group 14, so we cover up that one. We know it has four valence electrons, so we draw one on each side. Okay, so argon, germanium, iodine, um, you guys can do those on a piece of paper just as practice. So look and see which group it's in, and you should know the valence electrons. You draw the symbol in the middle, um, and then draw one on each side until you get to four, and then you start doubling up on each side. So don't just, if it has four, don't draw four dots on one side. Um, draw it on each side. You have four different sides, so you can kind of imagine an invisible box here. You have four sides that you do the valence electrons on. All right, um, that should be it. Um, hopefully you guys watched the video, learned some stuff. I'll see you guys in class next time.